Malik is insisting on recording this uh, video for YouTube so that you can have access to it at any time. Let's take a deep breath in, allowing the body to relax, hip, hip width apart, feet hip width apart, and bringing your awareness of the alignment, starting from the feet, lifting your toes, and finding yourself vacillating between the ball of your feet and your heels, rocking forward and back gently. And as you do that, I want you to feel the lower abdominals pulling in towards the belly button and the lower ribs closing in and going into the belly button. I call that the short stomach, long back. Feeling the openness of the chest, allowing the arms to come down, relaxing the toes, stacking the bones one on top of the other. Again, there is a slight lower curvature in the spine and a lower curvature of the upper back, keeping the ears in line with the shoulders, feeling the crown of the head connected to the sole of the feet between the heels. Take a deep breath in. <sighs> Exhale it all out through the mouth. Again, inhale. <sighs> One more. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, arms up. All the way up. Clasping opposite elbow. And let's go to the right, feeling grounded on the left side, feeling the nice lift of the elbow to the left, to the right side. As you tilt to the right, feel the left side. Very good, back to center, inhale. And exhale, lengthen a little bit more. Inhale to the left. Exhale back to center again. Inhale to the right. Exhale back to center, inhale to the left. Exhale back to center, clasping your hands behind your neck. Take a deep breath and inhale, bringing the elbows in and exhale round the spine and stretch. Feeling the gentle pull of the neck forward as you feel a stretch in your lower back. As you come to a flat back position, open up the arms, open up the elbows out like a butterfly wing. Inhale back to center. And then keeping your hips bent, inhale, chest up, look up a little bit. You see my reflection in the mirror, it's challenging. Inhale back up, all the way up. Squeeze your glutes, squeeze your heel. And if you can, rise up. If not, just stand there. Feel nice and tall. Again, here we go, elbows in, bend the knees, bring the forehead to the pubis bone, find the roundness of your back, imagine a cat-cow stretch, finding a nice flat back, opening up the elbows, keep the knees bent into chair, open up the chest, open up the lower back. Inhale, lengthen in that position, go ahead and rise up to the ball of your feet and back to center one more time. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, flat back. All the way up. Keep it open, lengthen, squeeze everything, lift up, and gently release. Very good. Take a deep breath in, taking your right foot forward, your left leg back. Again, option is to hold on to your hips or clasping your hands behind your back. Go ahead and using that bending position, come to bring your belly to that thigh, perhaps your left thigh. Keep your hands directed towards the sky and see if you can release your head. Again, you can always keep the toes on the floor, but a nice resistance here as you stretch. Again, pushing the hands upward. There is a resistance here with the heel digging into the floor. Very good, release the hands to the floor, very gently bring yourself slowly into a squat. The way you're gonna do that is keep your right foot to the floor. Again, this is not for everybody. Bringing your left knee close to the toes of your right foot, keep your hands forward and stretch. Use your breath, that's it.
One more breath. Excellent. Release the hands back to the floor, the weight back to the floor. If you can, go ahead, release the left heel back to the floor. Again, this is all optional. You don't have to straighten out the back of your knees. What you have to do is relax your neck. Bending both knees, bring yourself back to all fours and slowly rolling it up. And here we go, other side, left foot forward. Hands on hips if you want to. If not, go ahead and release forward slowly. Clasp your hands behind your back. Again, you can always just do this for stability. If stability is not an issue, go ahead and stretch the arms directly to the sky. Don't let them go overboard. Just get it nice and stretched. This is about stretching your hamstring and engaging your core. One more breath. Exhale, release the hands back to the floor and bring your right knee to the floor. Stretch the arms forward and stretch. You can relax the toes behind you. It's kind of like a preparation for a run. One more breath. Excellent. Let's bring ourselves into all fours. And we'll start with the right foot forward. Take a deep breath and inhale, bringing that right foot forward. This time we're going to go ahead and open up to the inside. Very good. So now the back foot is going to turn slightly. Let it stretch your inner thigh. Very good. If you want to, you can bring your forearms to the floor. So we are stretching. Very good, your gracilis. Now bring those hips forward, Jean. Move your hips forward as best you can. That's it. It's kind of like a lunge, but instead of being over the front foot, you're going between both arms. Very good. One more breath. Excellent. Let's pivot back to the front. And let's take the right hand on top of the right knee and twist over to the right. Malaika? Yeah. J'ai besoin de la prise pour le téléphone. That's right. Excellent. For further more stretching, if you want to, it's optional. See if you can bring the back leg up and maybe grab onto that back foot. If you have a band, if you have a tie, if you have a wrap, anything will work. If not, if this is challenging enough, stay here. Again, you're not on that knee pad, you're forward. The best lunge you can give me first. Yes. Excellent, and very gently press back into a hamstring stretch. Il y a la rallonge dehors, la jaune qui est par terre. Relax your neck. And very gently back to center. Find yourself back into all fours. Inhale, chest up, look up, curl the toes under, lift the tailbone. And exhale, round the spine. Here we go, left leg forward. Coming to the best lunge possible. Once you find that possible best lunge, see if you can rotate the back leg a little bit. So what am I doing? I'm in a normal lunge and then I go sideways. So be careful not to strain the knee, just simply go sideways enough that you can feel the stretch of the inner thigh. And then moving right in between both, on, both legs. Sometimes you might have a table or a couch here or a ball. Again, be gentle. Don't be forceful. Opening up the hip, hip flexors, starting using your breath. 
Mais non, ma chérie. Tu vas dans la, dans la prochaine. And very gently, find yourself walking yourself back to a nice lunge, facing the front knee and squaring it off. Sinking that right hip to the floor, take your right hand to the floor, take your left hand on top of the left knee, and twist as you sink. Feel the lengthening of the shoulders away from the foot. So you want to see how much of a lengthening can you create. Very good. Very gently press back, hamstring stretch. Again, what's most important is to make sure that we keep that lumbar spine, belly button or hip bone to the floor, then eventually release the back. But try to get as best as you can with a flat back, the knee stretch is not as important. See, the more you stretch the knee and around the back, the more it pulls and you get all these back aches. One more breath. And bring yourself back into all fours. Inhale, chest up, look up. Curl the toes under, shake your tail and exhale round the spine. Curl the toes under, press back into a downward dog and stretch again, this time all the way to the calves. If you find that you're uncomfortable on your wrist, you can do the dolphin on your forearms and stretch the same way. This time you'll have maybe some strain in the shoulders, but again, it's up to you. Very good. Let's bring ourselves into the floor and let's work on next stretch. Take a deep breath in. If this is uncomfortable for you to sit on your heels, you can always bring a bolster between your calf and your thigh or put a pillow or two. Or you can just go into the favorite sitting position. Taking a deep breath in, grabbing onto your opposite elbow once again. And let's inhale to the right. Sinking the hips to the left, back to center. Inhale to the left, sinking the hips to the right, and back to center. Take a deep breath in, open up the arms, bringing yourself to the right. See if you can take the back hand of your left hand against the outer right thigh, taking your right arm around your back, and stretch into a seated twist. and switch to the other side. And you might not be able to hold on to that thigh, but what you can do is use your thumb and place it on the instep of the opposite foot. So if I'm twisting to my left, I'm using my left thumb to press on the insole of my right foot, massaging my feet, lengthening all the way. Very good. Take a deep breath in, release into child pose, holding on to your heels. And see if you can rise the spine while keeping your forehead on top of your thigh. Inhale, flat back. Lift, open up the chest. And again, exhale, rounding the spine, forehead to the knees. One more, inhale. Lengthening the crown of the head, flat back, opening up the chest. Very good, excellent. Let's bring your feet forward. Let's grab onto the right foot. And let's massage the ankle one way. And the other way. And then let's see if we can cradle the baby. You can simply open up the hip. You can bring 
the hip back, the knee back. Very good, one more. This time we're gonna go into a runner's stretch for the inner thigh again, opening up the leg out to the side, twisting to the left and reaching for the left foot, targeting the right thigh, the right uh, obliques, the right lats, which eventually will hit your insertion into the shoulder, connecting to the terrace, major, minor. Very good. Try to square the shoulder over your thigh. And once again, relaxing your head, relaxing the neck muscle, relaxing the jaw, even the tongue. Although the hips might not be moving, see if you can lengthen and gently twist the thoracic vertebrae. Maybe the shoulders will follow, but allow the head to sink. And gently inhale, release arms all the way up or not. Very good. And here we go. Let's take that leg a little bit further out to the side, holding on to that right ankle. Again, you can use that elbow against your inner thigh and stretch sideways. Relaxing the elbow, opening up the chest. And if it allows the movement to go all the way, go all the way. I like to use my opposite hand. So I'm twist, I'm, I'm leaning to the left, so I'll take my left hand and press down on the right knee a little bit to really feel the psoas being stretched. Very nice and gently release. And let's continue by taking this left leg behind you, extending your front leg and working on the wrist simultaneously. Sometimes you might want to remove the calf out of the way by pressing the upper thigh inward and the calf outward. Taking your fingertips facing you, go as far as you can as you stretch the forearms. Very good. Hopefully you'll be feeling it on the interior part of the forearm. And then gently switch, placing it on the top of the, uh, I'm placing my wrist on the floor, the top of my hand on the floor. And then I squeeze my fingers towards my wrist. So I try to have really nice straight elbows. So it looks like this. Very good. And let's see if we can come down all the way to the forearms. Option to bring the right knee up. You can always go all the way down.
And if you want to extend the top leg, feel free to grab onto the toes and extending it out to the side. So using your breath, You can also extend the left arm. Feel the stretch between fingertips and knee. You can also bring the right leg on top of the left hip. You can explore. And if this is not available for your knee, you can always be on your left side, on your right side, and you can hold on to the left ankle with the left hand and see if the stretch works. And as you roll back to your right side, bend your right knee, use your hand to support you to bring yourself back to center and bring that top leg all the way around and find yourself wrapped on the outside of the right knee and twist to the left, seated twist. Use your breath. and gently release. I would like for you to take that bottom leg, right leg under, keep your right knee, your left knee bent like this. Very good. So the toes are on the floor, the left knee is up, and now go ahead and see if you can take the twist a little bit further. I guess I've been inspired by the pinups on my masks. That's it, so you'll be stretching the shoulder, deepening. So bring that right knee, Jean, all the way to the left on the, on the floor. See if you can keep your shoulders facing forward. The hips is gonna come off the floor. You'll be looking at your tailbone. And gently release. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. Let's take that same leg and bring it into a nice little stretch. And let's cradle the baby. So again, try to have a nice long spine. Using movement to release any residual tension. Again, if you want to bring the knee back a little bit. One more breath and when ready, go ahead, release the foot to the floor and moving your right leg out a little bit. That's it. So it's almost like a 45 degree angle. Very nice. We're again, targeting the lower back, opening up the hips. And so twisting to the right, we're going to be stretching the left, so uh, uh, the left latissimus dorsi and the obliques right there. So again, try to be as tall as you can, as flat of a spine as possible. And when you reach your edge, if the knee starts getting bothersome, go ahead and put a pillow underneath it. Support it. And then gently see how far can you go and completely release. Feel the stretch between the intercostal and the intercostal. Don't be afraid to roll the shoulders forward. Squaring 
breath as if the sternum is facing your shins and mindfully pressing that left knee down. The hands are continuously reaching as you completely relax the inner thigh. Breathe and surrender into the ground, into an image of serenity. Use your breath to expand as you inhale and lengthen as you exhale and back to center. Very good. And as you go into the side position, take your right hand to the left ankle. Again, you might start small at first, just feel the stretch. So at first we were rotated. Now it's just simply into the obliques. Feel the stretch between the hip and the elbow as if somebody's got you by the elbow and stretching, just like the exercise we did in the beginning. You can also explore extending the arms. Again, here if you needed to put a little pillow underneath your left knee, feel free. And again, you can use your right arm to stretch, to assist your stretch as you release your lower back. And try to see how much can you bring the right ribcage away and freeing your back. Hopefully you'll feel it all the way up into the arm. You can use your fingers to make sure you're opening up the ribcage to the back. Ideally, your spine is resting on your thigh. Very good. And release. Very nice. Let's go ahead and bring that knee to the left foot. Again, stacking the inner thigh inside and the calf outwardly. And see if we can again stretch the forearms. So again, it's the same feeling as you place the palm of your hands, fingertips facing your hips, stretching the forearms. And you can go as far as you can, as long as you're keeping the elbows as straight as possible, which will force an opening of the chest, a gentle exter an exterior rotation at the shoulder. In fact, imagine you're wearing a royal jewel Visualizing the sun targeting your heart, opening up, warming up. Excellent. And again, let's flip the wrists around, placing the palm facing upward. Very good. Putting some weight into it gently and then squeezing your hands. Spreading out the thumbs and when ready, go ahead slowly bringing yourself into your forearms and elbows. You can have a feeling of pressing your right hip up a little bit if you need to adjust. Where is it? I like to sometimes place my hand right where the lumbar spine meet the sacrum. And I assist and I lengthen massaging my lower back and if you want to you can bring that left knee up and you can also extend if you want to all the way down to the ground and if on one side you were able to extend the leg Explore the extension. So again, you can use fingers away from the knee. And if this is not available for you, feel free to simply lay on top of that left side and then grab onto the top foot and stretch. So it'll still give you a nice stretch on the hip flexors. One more breath. And 
and gently allow the top foot to release. Use your hand as you roll to your left side. Bring yourself up slowly, guiding and assisting yourself. Taking the right leg and wrap it around the outside of the left knee. And bring yourself into a comfortable seated twist. Always find the length first before you twist using your left arm. I like to think about bringing my left rib cage to my right inner thigh, squeezing all the organs. See if you can bring that back hand closer to the hips as possible. So the back hand brings your height while the hand that wraps uses strength as you use the best you can your breath to twist as far as you can. Keep looking over your right shoulder. With each inhalation, you're hitting a wall. With each exhalation, you explore the space the wall just created. Don't go back to zero. Just keep adding on with each breath. Eventually, you'll find that your arm can come to the outside, and you can even wrap. Very good. Extending the bottom leg. And let's take this stretch all the way. So if my right leg is on top, I am gonna go to the left and I'm gonna go towards the direction. And again, the goal is to try to bring the knee as close to the floor as possible. So Jean, go the other way. With your upper body, you're going the other way. That's it. So let's say we're doing it together. Which leg is on top? It's the left leg or your right leg. So now I'm going to continue. Yeah, as I'm going this way, my shoulders are going the opposite way. Yeah. Yes, excellent. And if you want to do it on the forearms, you can as well. Pressing all the way, but maybe your left, your right arm will be off. And gently release. Here we go. Let's bring ourselves into a butterfly pose. So lift the feet together, nice and tall spine. The legs can be all the way close together, or they can come forward a little bit. As long as you have somewhere to go, relaxing the spine, relaxing the back, relaxing the breath. Sometimes sitting on a bolster can help. Get as low as you can and then release everything. Again, using your breath generously Making sure that you're not holding any tension in the shoulders and the neck. Allow the tongue to be loose, but not against the palate or pressed against the teeth. Just let it relax. Here, allow the head to be so heavy. It is decompressing your spine into a stretch. Using your inhale, breathing in through the belly, expanding the rib cage, filling the chest. And exhale, your jai breathing through the nose.
You want to use that breath as much as you can until you feel this wave of heat that comes in and you can feel the resistance dissipating. And slowly, slowly, gently bring yourself up. And slowly extending the legs forward. Again, maybe this is not available for everybody to have their legs straight. You can have the bolster underneath your knees. It's not important to have straight legs. It's important to feel the stretch. And so there is also another way to get down as best you can if you do have the flex is to reach back as much as you can. Lengthening, again, finding a place of slight discomfort. We don't grow when everything is comfortable. So we gotta go into a place where we're almost wanting to hold our breath. And that's when you really focus on exhaling. Again, very gently finding a position, sometimes having a block, let's say the head doesn't get all the way down, whatever the level of the block is. And if you're in advance, you might want to have a block to go a little bit further than where your feet are. Just, you get a double stretch, that's it. Maybe on top of the knee is not very comfortable. See if you can place the block between the knees in the length position and see if that's a little bit better. It gives you an opportunity to fold forward a little bit more. Very good. Take a deep breath in, and here we go for a second yin posture. I'd like for you to visualize the body as an observer, allowing the mind to be on its own, an observer of the body's experience rather than the opinion or the judgment of the body's experience. Let the mind focus on one point, perhaps the breath, perhaps the space between the eyebrows at the center of the forehead. Perhaps you can just be a witness of how the body adapts with each breath. Here, the abdominal organs are confined. They're not able to express and expand. Let's see how the body adapts with the breath. Where does the breath go? I want you to push the envelope with your inhale. Listen to the body. What adjustment does the body need to create more room? Do not interfere, but assist the body. Let the mind focus on the quality of the breath. How deep is your breathing? See if you can hold the breath. And make your exhale twice the length of your inhale. I can also use mantras. 
It doesn't have to be a Hindi mantra. It could be your own personal mantra. It could be a Hail Mary. It could be Our Father. It could be the St. Francis prayer. It could be Om. It could be Jai Ganesha, Jai Ganesha, Jai Ganesha Deva. Nata Jati Parvati Dita Mahadeva. You can sing if it helps you release. I invite you to also move like a little worm to make sure that there is no stagnant stiffness. And then you go back into your meditation. Finish your breath completely. And gently, slowly unravel, unwrap your spine. Back to vertical position. Good job. Very nice. Let's bring ourselves into all fours. And release the tailbone the other way. If you want to, you can curl the toes under, lifting the tailbone again, rolling the shoulders back, deep pressing the scapulas, lifting the tailbone, putting some weight a little bit on the toes, maybe even putting some weight into the stretch. So making sure that even the little pinkies are facing forward and are rolled under and see if you can come to seating on your heels. If not, again, get a bolster. If it helps to sit on, you get a calf stretch and you get a um, massage. So this is excellent for plantar fasciitis. So making sure even your little pinkies are facing forward. If we've had a bunion Surgery sometimes is a little uncomfortable to do so. So go with uh, what feels slightly uncomfortable but not painful. You can also put a nice little rolled towel right underneath the, the ankle. And releasing, take your thumbs on the inside and move the calves out of the way as you bring yourself to seating on your heels. Toes are together, heels are out, sickled. Let's see if we can get into an ankle stretch. Again, targeting the peroneus longus muscles. And release. One more time, let's flex the ankle and stretch. If you want to, as a transition, go ahead into a downward dog and see if you can stretch not only the toes, the ankle, the calves, and the hamstrings. Very good. Let's move into the upper body. Very gently, you're gonna go ahead and find yourself with your left forearms forward, keeping your hips right over the knees. And you're gonna simply extend the right arm forward and you're gonna stretch the underarm. Feel it, move away as you reach forward. Feel as if there's super glue on your forearm and elbow and that you're stretching the underarm skin. See the reaction and the connection to the neck, to the ribcage, to the lower back. Excellent, back to center, drawing in, let's switch. Right forearm is parallel to the shoulders and extending the left arm forward again, extend forward and then lean back. So you go as far forward as you can and then press that elbow and forearm down and imagine drawing the shoulder back into its socket but the forearm is glued to the floor. One more stretch. One more breath. Excellent and release. This time you're going to go ahead, keep your hips up. 
You're going to extend both arms forward. Maybe the forehead is on the floor. Maybe the chest is on the floor. So opening up the upper back while lifting the tailbone. Inhale, release your forehead, put some weight into your forearms and bring yourself into the floor, find yourself into Sphinx. Already the hips are gonna start settling a little bit, very gently, walk your legs back as you bring your chest up relax your hips from side to side and gently release hands underneath the shoulders as if going into cobra this time go ahead take a deep breath in and lengthen into upward dog in a yin style, meaning allowing the head to sink. Maybe you find yourself a little too far. Feel free to curl the toes under, bring your hips a little closer, and sink. You want to make sure that you spread out your thumbs, middle fingers forward, thumbs facing each other, pinkies into the diagonal about 45 degrees out. Bring those hands a little closer to your hips, underneath your shoulders. If not, you will create some tension. If this is not available, again, you can have blocks and you can place your elbows on a blocks or a bolster. Again, focusing on your respiration. I like to visualize that the Ganji River, or the holy water is coming down through the crown of my head. Soothing, cooling, purifying my spine. The nerve bundle within it, all the way down to the tailbone. Don't create a whirlpool in your lower back, but rather let it flow like a stream between your legs, down between your heels, out of your feet. Become the substrate on which things shift rather than the vessel that holds the tension. Yes, it is not comfortable at first, but I promise you if you start watching movies in this position, it will become much easier over time. Three more deep breaths. Feel the release of the lower back stretches the hip flexor. You can feel the muscles connecting from mid ribs the inside spine all the way into mid-thigh by completely surrendering your sacrum. Excellent. Use your belly button as you press against the spine. Here we go back to that original position. Lower down the forearms. Bring your knees together and release into child pose. At first, the arms are extended. Once you find your full posture, go ahead and bring your hands by your feet. Allow the shoulders to roll forward. Allow the forehead to surrender to the ground. If there's any tension, any thoughts that are weighing you down, gather it all up into one spot, the third eye or that connection where the forehead touches the floor. Asking permission to the earth, take a deep breath in. And just like that, with an exhale, surrender it all. Let it go. Yeah. 
lighten up. Free up. You'll notice that as you take bigger and bigger inhales, you'll find that your back expands and maybe your head moves position. Two more breaths. Let the shoulders surrender. One more breath. Exhale completely. Go ahead and draw your hands underneath the shoulders, push into the palm of your hand as you unwrap your spine slowly as you come to a seated position on your heels. Very gently as a transition, hands on hips. You can flip the fingers upward as the palm of your hand supports your lower back, opening up into camel. Again, hips over your knees. This is not about how far you can bend back, but rather how lifted can your chest go? How back the head releases on the shoulders? Again, only release your head if you can find that the chest is parallel to the sky or the floor. Squeezing the shoulders, you create a pillow with the upper traps. Using your hand to press your hips forward, your heart to reach up. Relax your neck, relax your pelvis. Remember, we are as young as the flexibility of our spine. Inhale back to center. And back into all four. Curl the toes under. And once again, explore your downward dog. Each time stretching deeper. The arms are stretched. The back is stretched. The hamstrings are stretched. Allow the hips to go from side to side, stretching the rib cage. Perhaps maybe if you want to, you can extend your right leg up into one leg a downward dog. Nice and stretched. And slowly other side, left leg. And back to center, very nice. Taking your all fours, beginners, taking your right knee forward or intermediate. Go ahead, extend from a downward dog, bringing your right foot forward. Again, this is not a flow class, so we don't keep the knee over the ankle. We bring ourselves to seated on our heel as best you can. Very good. Again, Knee issues, take that bolster and support the knee. Again, we're avoiding at all costs to be on top of the kneecap. We're trying to bring a split between the knees. So go as far forward as possible. Very good. Come to seating on the heel without lifting the heel off the floor. Of course, option two, if this is comfortable for you, you can bring the back leg up, 
only as long as you're not lifting the hips up. So again, keeping this position for two to three minutes. If you're just starting, it might be 30 seconds. No judgment. Try again each time, adding on 10 more seconds. Using your breath. You can use this as a balance only if you can really relax into this posture. If this posture is going to cause you to hold energetically any tension just to balance, it's not worth it. Put your hand on the floor. The goal is to fully relax. One more breath. Feel the lengthening from the knee all the way. You can feel it in the hip. So again, from this position, here we go. Extending if the, head, the leg was in a bound. Release and we're going into your gecko. Placing the hands into the floor, maybe the forearms. If it's available, you can extend and you can twist. You can extend the arms forward. You can wrap the hand underneath. If this is, again, not an issue with balance, whatever helps stretching the legs a little bit deeper. Again, there is nothing wrong with being here. There's nothing wrong with having a bolster and placing your hand on the bolster here. If you have a bar or a couch, yes, exactly. Good job, everyone. Again, using your breath fully. One more breath. And gently option one. Slowly bring your hands underneath your shoulders. Guide yourself back into all fours. And then slide that same foot, your right knee, back forward into a pigeon position. Advanced student who are in their gecko already, opening up the knee, find your pigeon by simply exploring. How far can you bring your hip to the floor on your left side? Wiggle that right foot as close to their left forearm. Place your right forearm back on the floor and explore your pigeon. Just like that. So we were working on the hip flexors, now we're working on the opposite, your deep six muscles of 
the buttocks, your glutes. Very good. Nice. So again, you can rock from side to side to make sure that there is no residual tension. And be careful with the knee. This is not for everybody. Maybe you need a block underneath your right glutes. Maybe you need to prop yourself up a little higher just so that you're not straining the knee joint. So it's again up to you. This is a yin class. This is not a performance or a competition. This is about taking yourself to a stretch that is of your level, of your limitations. Honoring, respecting your limitation. This is not, this is not the type of class where it's uh, the tougher it is, the stronger you are. It's the opposite. It's actually tougher when you do less. So finding a position of slight discomfort and then remaining within it. Some of these postures are so uncomfortable we want to remove ourselves out of it, but yet we do that in life, in social settings. I'm uncomfortable with this, therefore let me remove myself from this, when in fact all I need to do is first exhale, explore, observe. It is not my story, it is just a moment in time. And with each breath, that moment shifts. So whatever the muscle that was tight in the initial posture is not the same two minutes later. So this is where we stop the bind from giving opinions and judging and allowing the mind to become a witness of the experience. The body is itself capable of adapting and shifting without our mind. If left to the body, it is its own best healer. It is the mind that corrupts that. So focus and own your mind to the breath, to a single point of focus. And with each breath that you find, the posture is no longer challenging. You've reached a new edge. Don't be comfortable. Keep growing. A few more breaths. Exhale completely, using your hands as you bring yourself up into an upward pigeon, curling the left toe under, using your core, finding yourself back into a downward dog, slowly pressing your left knee back, or finding yourself into all fours, and then go ahead and bringing your right leg back and stretch the back of your right knee. At any of these postures, engage your bandhas. The first one, Mula Bandha, resembles the Kegel exercise, you know, lengthening the spine, keeping the diaphragm in, the chin, feel the extension of the spine all the way to the cervical spine. And here we go, we inhale, left leg comes up. And find your lunge, left knee forward. Sometimes I have a gentleman that can lean forward or they're just not able to hold on to the floor. 
I'll have ladies or gentlemen holding on to two chairs. I'll have two chairs on either side of them. So they have something to hold on to. So again, here the stretch is really parallel. Earlier we were in this position, slight bend in the back knee. Here we really are internally rotating the back leg, really working on the natural anatomical position, the parallel line. Again, if this is comfortable, without moving this diagram, just simply bringing the back leg in, it's optional. Very good. Again, you want to you want to bring your left hip as close to your left heel as possible, if the knee allows. This is about coming into a squat position. That's it. We're working on the meridians here. In a yin class, we work on meridians. We're locking the ankle, knee, and hip. Using your breath. Feel free if you want to close your eyes here. And perhaps visualize an image that brings you peace of mind, a restful heart. Try to keep the corners of your lips lifted into a dolphin smile. Even if the pain is uncomfortable or discomfort is uncomfortable, keep smiling. It does magic tricks to the mind. Very good. As you extend the back leg, if you were bound, just simply bring your hands on the inside and find yourself exploring your gecko. How low can you go? What adjustments you need to make in order for you to really lower down? If you twist it on one side, make sure that you twist on the other. And again, remember, this is about relaxing in these postures. Nothing is comfortable the first time you get into an ice bath. But I promise you, if you have the courage to stay a couple more minutes, you'll find that the ice bath becomes hot. And then eventually it becomes numb. And then you don't want to get out. But then it's the time to get out. So it's the same concept with yin class. All these postures don't feel good getting into it. It's stiff. We're working the joints here, not the muscles. So in order to target the joint, we have to get to a place where the muscles relaxed enough so that it targets the tendon, so the tendon is relaxed enough, so it accesses the joint. And there is magic for the range of motion. So again, gently explore movements to get yourself out of these places of stiffness. And use your breath. If you want to move gently into your pigeon ahead of time, feel free. If you have other stretches that you need, feel free. If emotions come up, do not deny them. Like clouds, let them go through. Explore them without judgment. Have awareness without attachment. Very good. And as we're here exploring, you can all again go back into all fours. 
or you can slowly bring yourself into the pigeon again by exploring, opening up. So if I'm in this position, I can even go back into a four, slide the knee forward, adjust the foot by itself. Try not to take your hand and move the foot. Let it come naturally. If you need to sit on the block, sit on the block. If you're in an advanced position that you can actually release, find yourself into your pigeon right away from gecko position. Again, you can always assess where are your hips, where's your tailbone prior to going into ooh, sleeping pigeon. Couple more breaths. Finish your breath very gently. Inhale, come up. And here we go, curl the right toe under, very gently find yourself pressed back into a downward dog, leaning mostly on that left heel. Lean and stretch. And then explore once again. So here we go, we're gonna go into the most advanced hero pose. So if you've got your blocks, if you've got pillows, um, maybe I can have a few pillows. My assistant over here will get me some pillows. Go ahead. You can sit at the edge of your bolster. So show me what you got and then I'll guide you. So the goal is to lean back. So again, let's say I'm going to bring a bunch of pillows here. And let's say I don't have my back, my like uh, Olivia says hi. I don't know. So here we go. So you can again stack up the pillow all the way to where it is, where you can be comfortable in this position. Again, you want to make sure that you move the calves out of the way. bring yourself into hero pose. If you want a little pillow, make sure that you're not getting into a position where your neck is strained. So again, trying to keep your knees together, a nice lowered spine expand, wherever that is comfortable for you.
that's Thais, my puppy. Hi, Sandra. So before you come out of this um, hero pose, you can always grab onto these ankles and guide yourself back into off on your forearms to come out of it. If you have ankle stretch, you can just simply release from ankle stretch and bring your knees into your chest. Very good. I'd like for you to extend your leg nice and flexed ankles. You're going to take your left hand on top of your chest. Very good. And then you're going to bring your right hand on top on the back of your head. Flexing your feet, lowering down the lower back, lifting the pubis bone towards the belly button. Feel nice and long, short stomach, long back. Left hand on top of the chest, take a deep breath and inhale. As you exhale, I want you to press into the chest and lift the head. Inhale back down. As you exhale again, left hand press down into the chest as you guide your head into a cervical stretch. Very good. Let right hand on top of the right shoulder, left hand as you turn your head to the left. You're going to go ahead and guide the back of your head towards the left collarbone. So again, you're stretching and you're stretching and you're enjoying the stretch. Keep your lower back into the ground. And back to center, switch side. Looking to the right, using your left hand on top of the shoulder and stretch. And back to center. Very nice. Extending the arms over your head and go ahead. Legs are walking out of the hips. Feel the stretch, feel the lengthening without releasing the lower back off the floor. Try to keep a natural spine off the floor. And very good. Take a deep breath in. Bring the right knee into the chest. Extend the right leg wherever that is. Maybe the knee is not stretched. If you can, extend the back leg. Very good. If you can, hold on to the big toe. Very good. Taking your left hand on top of the thigh. Coming as high up as you can as you bring your right leg out. And then go ahead, opening it out to the right. And switch. Very nice. Take your left hand to the outside of your shins. Right arm to the floor. Look to the right. Bring your twist to the left. Option two, stay here. The other option is to bind, finding both hands to the opposite foot. A gentle pressing of the hips away from the ribs. Feel the length in the spine. Use your breath. And gently release. Bring yourself back in the center line. Bring both knees into the chest. Excellent. Taking the left foot into the left hand, extend the right leg out. Again, find a nice stretch. This one is obviously engaged. We're holding everything out so that when we come to a relaxation, we're keeping the engagement but opening up the hip. Very good. As you switch, go ahead, bring your left leg to the right, 
Looking to the left, find yourself into a nice stretch. And if you want to bind, go ahead and bind. And again, moving the hips away from the ribs. I forgot about putting those back on. <clears throat> gently release, bring yourself back, bring your knees into the chest, give yourself a hug, thumbs up if you can still hear me, good, very good, and let's go into happy baby. If you want to, you can extend again at the hips, wherever that bolt is natural, releasing the hips. You'll know because here you're tucking the pelvis, here you're engaging the muscles. So go into a place where it's comfortable. Very good. And release into butterfly pose. For those who have been practicing sleeping yogi, you can try it here. And very gently bring your feet to the floor, knees to the sky. If you want to, you can go ahead and find yourself into a plow. Again, squeezing the shoulders towards the spine. If you want to clasp onto the hand, again, it's an external rotation from the sternum out. Move the chin away from the chest. There's a perfect uh, balance across the top of your shoulders, the back of your head, to the elbows. You can stay in the plow or you can move into plow. The reverse of your hero pose which was an extreme flex of the spine, hip flexors, extension. Now we're at the opposite. We're in the stretching of the spine. Any forward bend in this position, forward bend, Uttanasana or Vashimottanasana, you'll find that if you're breathing in a position where your organs, your abdominal organs are constricted, it's somehow it's making you sweat. They're detoxifying, they're squeezing all the excess out of them. Five more breaths. Excellent, very gently, slowly guide yourself to again, happy baby. And relax very gently the whole body. Once again, take a deep breath in, hands behind your neck. Inhale and exhale, stretch the chin to the chest. One more, take a deep breath in, wrap your right leg over the left. 
twist to the right, look to the left. And count a twist. And switch legs. Left leg over right. Twist to the left, look to the right. Always use your inhale for five, four, three, two, one. Hold for five, exhale for ten. Or inhale for four, or hold for six. Or hold for two, exhale for six. Ideally, you get to breathe in. For eight, hold for eight, exhale for eight. And count a twist. And back to center. Inhale very gently before we release. Exhale, bring yourself forward one more time. <clears throat> For Paschimottanasana, forward bend. Stretch it all out. Opening up the legs into a straddle. Wherever that position is for you. And stretching your straddle. Very good, and gently rocking the legs in. Let's do three rolls back, inhale back, exhale forward, exhale. Take a deep breath in as you roll back, extend the legs, extend everything, contract everything. And exhale, release. Shake it all out from side to side. Relax your head. Go ahead and massage your scalp. Shake your arms. Shake your legs. Take a deep breath in. Relax your head. Let it roll from side to side. And when ready, bring yourself into a comfortable relaxation, Shavasana, corpse pose. At this point, if you feel like you want to bring a pillow underneath your knees to relax your lower back, or if you want to bring your feet on top of the pillow and keep your knees open, it's up to you. Make yourself comfortable. Get what it is that you need if it's a blanket. Inhale gently. <sighs> and exhale completely. Again, inhale.
One more breath, inhale. And exhale completely. Allow the breath to relax, bringing your awareness to the sole of your feet. Become aware of your connection to the floor, how the heels, the calves, the back of the legs, the pelvis, the arms, the back of the neck, the shoulders, the back of the head, all the points of contact with the ground. Become aware of them. The symmetry or the asymmetry of how the body connects to the floor. Become aware of the sensations, perhaps the temperature of your limbs. With your mind on your feet, take a deep breath in and when you exhale, relax the toes, the sole of the feet, the top of the feet, the ankles, the heels. Inhale and relax the calves, the back of the knees, the thighs, the hamstrings. Allow the top of your legs to roll out and the back of your legs to sink. Breathe and feel the opening of your hips. As you sink into the pelvis, breathe and relax the fingertips, the palm of your hands, the back of your hands, the wrists. Relaxing the forearms, the elbows, the arms, all the way to the shoulders. Allow the arms to become heavy. Allow the chest to open as you breathe. And as you exhale, feel the back of the head, the upper back, the mid back and the lower back sink into the ground. Merging as if laying on hot desert sand. Inhale into the muscles of the neck, relaxing the jaw. Letting go of the tongue, relaxing the root of the tongue. The muscles of the face relax around the temples, around the scalp, around the eyes and the mouth. Breathe into the abdominal cavity, relaxing, bringing the awareness of healing to the liver, the spleen, the lungs. The intestine, the kidneys, the reproductive organs. Become aware of the muscles, the bones, the joints, all the way to the smallest particle, the smallest molecule, the smallest atom of your being. And finally, bringing your awareness into the space between the eyebrows at the center of your forehead. There reside a space. Perhaps there is a shape, perhaps there is a light to it. Imagine opening the screen of your mind 
and at its center a tiny sparkling point of light. The body is relaxed. The breath is relaxed. The mind is relaxed. Here at the epicenter of the soul, you connect to the divine source of light. Merge with this light, pure in essence. Transparent unbiased feel yourself feel yourself embracing this light let this light nurture you and refill your spirit as if a vessel receiving pure light. To where you become the light. With each in breath, You increase the magnitude and intensity of this spirit light within you. You feel it. I embrace it. I become it. I am light. Om Shanti. Shanti Shanti.
you gently bring your awareness back into your breath. Into your body, lying on the floor. Aware of your environment. Exploring gently the space between the toes and fingers. Exploring the space around the body. And gently, when ready, bringing yourself into a fetal position on your right side, tucking your knee ever so close to the heart. Holding on to like a ball. Every one of us matter. Every single one human being in this life is a part of that light. It's part of that circuit, this channel. And it is my responsibility to shine forth my gift that only I possess into this world. And so it is with every single one of you. You matter. Your gift is essential. It is your responsibility to share that light with the world. Very gently bringing yourself into a comfortable position of your choice, if not already in it. Placing the palm of your hands together in front of your heart. Let the breath rise from the heart to the third eye as you inhale. And as you exhale back into your heart, remember that more important than yoga is to be kind. The belly is relaxed, the heart is open, the throat is clear. The mind is spacious. Let us bring into this world a sense of community. Love, compassion, and a little bit of selflessness. A little seed of selflessness and may it grow larger and larger with each practice. Om Shanti Namaste. Have a beautiful day.